Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice radical equation with complex numbers. Well, this looks like an ordinary radical equation, right? Well, not really because we're dealing with complex numbers. I have another channel called CyberMath that deals with real numbers in general, trigonometry, algebra, and number theory mainly. Go ahead and check it out. If you haven't done so, maybe that's where you came from. If you did, say hi so we can acknowledge you. Great, so we have z plus the square root of z equals 5 plus 5i, and the square root in this case is used as the principal square root because with complex numbers, we have to be careful. There are two square roots because there are two numbers, basically, whose square equals a complex number. Think in the case of negative 1. Negative 1 has two square roots, i and negative i. But i is considered the principal square root so that it can agree with the real number world. Okay? Great. So let's go ahead and take a look at this from different angles. I'll be presenting two approaches. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I want to go ahead and do something interesting. And that will be isolating the square root of z. Because why not, right? Most radical equations are solved that way. So we're just going to go kind of like the real route, even though this is all about complex numbers. And that's what the first method is all about. Give you something a little bit more painful so you can appreciate the second method better. But again, I could be biased. You're going to decide which method you like better. All right, so let's go ahead and isolate square root of z. So that's going to give us something like this. And now we can do, uh, we can square both sides to eliminate the radical because that's our goal. We want to turn this into a polynomial equation, right? Because most polynomial equations can be solved, particularly if they are second degree, third, or fourth. Unfortunately, quintic and above cannot be solved. I know some people say, oh, quintic equations can be solved, bring or, you know, special radicals, whatever. Okay, let me say this one more time. Clearly, there is no quintic formula, okay? Anyways, so let's go ahead and square both sides. This is z. And the right-hand side, you can kind of take this as a whole, like a quantity, and just square that first, like a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. So it's going to look like this. How nice, right? And then uh, you can square it. If you square this, you're going to get 25. 5i squared will be 25. i squared, which is minus 25. Wow, that's uh, kind of cool, isn't it? Um, plus 2ab, that'll be plus 50i. By the way, uh, th this is why we get rid of the 25 here, because this is 5 times 1 plus i. And if you're dealing with complex numbers, you should definitely, definitely know 1 plus i squared is 2i. In other words, 1 plus i is a special number whose square is imaginary. Okay, and the same thing goes for 1 minus i, of course, because they're complex conjugates, they behave similarly. All right, so z equals 50i plus z squared minus 10z, and then this will become something like minus 10iz. I'm going to write the z last because we're going to turn it in a polynomial, into a polynomial in z. That's why we want to identify the coefficients of z here. Make sense? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring down this extra, bring to the right this extra z. So I can subtract it from this and make it minus 11z. But we have another z here, so be careful. We have z squared. And then uh, if you put those two together, I think it's going to be like 11 plus 10i. That's going to be the coefficient of z. And then plus 50i equals 0. Great. Don't you love that? Well, at least it's not cubic or quadratic. I mean, quartic or cubic. It's quadratic. Quadratic is easy to solve. We should be able to do this, right? Great. Let's take a look. Now, to solve it, we can use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. So we got to take this b and square it minus 4ac, but minus minus Wait, that's not C. C is plus, so okay, minus 200i. Yes, that's what we need to do. Divided by 2a, which is 2. Now, let's simplify under the radical. That's 121 minus 100 from 100i squared plus 220i minus 200i. Beautiful. 
and this is under the radical, but let me simplify this first. 21 plus 20i. And that's awesome, right? And you'll see why in a little bit. That's awesome. 11 plus 10i. Of course, this kind of brings in some difficulties because you know what? You need to find the square root of 21 plus 20i. That's the only challenge with the first method. But I think you can do that. There are formulas which you can memorize. I mean, not necessarily recommended, but if you're taking a test, you, you're going to do math competition. Yeah, highly recommend it because they, pro these problems come up all the time. But if you just, you have plenty of time and you want to find the square root of a complex number, and it, it says a nice one, because some of them are not going to be that nice, you can go ahead and do so. Set it equal to a plus bi. By the way, it's the name of this channel. Don't forget that, right? And now we can square both sides. And when we do, and we want to bring this first, so that'll be a squared minus b squared plus 2abi, and think about why this is minus b squared. And, oops, that's too long. Maybe like this, oops. Okay, equals 21 plus 20i. So it comes down to solving a system of equations, okay? a squared minus b squared is equal to 21, and 2ab is 20, so that means ab is 10. So you're basically looking for two numbers who that satisfy the system. If a and b are good numbers like integers, you can guess and check them. Like, for example, do you think 5 and 2 will work? Uh, because 5 times 2 is 10. But not only that, 25 minus 4 is also 21. So 5 and 2 definitely work. 2 and 5 don't because a squared minus b squared is not symmetric. So we can't switch them around. Okay? Makes sense? But f finding one square root is good enough. In other words, we found the square root of this number, square root of 21 plus 20i, is... 5 plus 2i. And you can also do that by breaking this down into 25 plus 2 times 5 times 2i plus 2i quantity squared, which is 4. But that's kind of like a stretch, isn't it? Okay, so let's scratch that out. Uh, that's so stretchy. But once you plug this in here, uh, you're going to get something like this. 11 plus 10i plus minus, uh, that'll be 5 plus 2i. And by the way, uh, this is one of the square roots. There's another one, which is the opposite, but we, we're taking care of that by using the plus minus sign. I know it's not written that way, but I write it that way, my way or highway, okay? So one of the roots will be 11 plus 10i plus 5 plus 2i divided by 2. That is 16 plus 12i divided by 2. That is 8 plus 6i, okay? So that seems to be one of the solutions for z, right? And the other one, should look like this, 11 plus 10i minus 5 minus 2i divided by 2. That'll be 6, which is 3 divided by 2. I mean, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and that's an 8i, which is going to give you 4i. So we have two candidates, right? 8 plus 6i and 3 plus 4i. Let me go ahead and write those down here. And why did I say candidates? Because we're not guaranteed that they would work. What is that supposed to mean? Well, if you check it out, plug it in, do you think that'll work? We need to test it, okay? Why? Because of the squaring both sides may introduce extraneous solutions. So, for example, if you take four plus 8 plus 6i, here, plug in 8 plus 6i, 8 plus 6i plus the square root of 8 plus 6i, is that going to give us the answer? Let's go ahead and check uh, the square root of 8 plus 6i, which can be written as 9 plus 6i minus 1, and then 3 squared, plus 2 times 3 times i plus i squared. So this is 3 plus i quantity squared, which means this is 3 plus i. 8 plus 6i plus 3 plus i does not equal, does not equal 5 plus 5i. But if you subtracted it, it would work, right? So instead of 3 plus i, if you took this to be negative 3 minus i, it would work. But can we take that as an answer? That's a good question. How do you find the square root of 4 plus 3i? That's also a good question, right? You can plug it in. But guess what? I want to continue with the second method because with the second method, I have a totally different approach, which will hopefully uh, sh uh, shed some light on the first method as well. Okay, so this is my equation. And now, instead of just you know, just trying to get rid of the radical, why not set it equal to a plus bi directly, right? Then this will be a plus bi quantity squared, right? So it's going to look like this. 5 plus 5i. 
and then we can go ahead and expand it bring the real parts together this will be minus b squared so we can write it like this and we're going to have a 2abi and 2ab plus b will be the imaginary part equals 5 plus 5i okay this is hopefully somewhat manageable a squared plus a uh did i get that right i, I don't i think i wrote this twice okay it looks like i did write the okay a squared minus b squared plus a and then 2abi and then bi okay okay this this should be it so now we have a squared minus b squared plus a equals 5 and 2ab plus b equals 5. So if you're able to solve this system, you should get the answers. And we didn't square anything, so this should be good to go. Uh, second equation, we can probably factor out a b. And if you kind of think about it, um, maybe uh, this can be like 1 times 5. a can be 2 and b can be 1. Uh, let's test it in the first equation. a is 2 squared minus 1 squared plus 2. That's 4 minus 1 which is three plus two is five, so it works, yes. So a equals two, b equals one works, which means two plus i is a solution. But that is for the square root of z. Don't get me wrong, it's not z, it's square root of z. So now we need to square both sides, and when we do, we're gonna get the actual value of z, which is four minus one, three plus four i. So z should be three plus four i, and we found two solutions, three plus four i and eight plus six i. As you know, this didn't work. Three plus four i should satisfy the original equation and that should be the only solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.